Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Isabel Tingzan. I'm a machine learning researcher at Thinking Machines Data Science. And today we'll be sharing with you our work on uh, mapping Philippine poverty using machine learning, satellite images, and open geospatial data. So just a quick background about who we are as a company. Um, so uh, we are a young data science startup company based in the Philippines. Um, we've worked with a number of clients from both the public and the private sector, um, notably the World Bank, UNDP, National Anti-Poverty Commission, and right now we're partnering up with research institutes and local universities with the goal of advancing research and development in the Philippines. Oh, oops. All right, so um, we, we're still pretty young, so we're still um, developing our expertise. So right now our area of interest is in geospatial analysis and visualization. So for example, we've done maps of HIV center accessibility across the Philippines, um, hazard exposure maps for the different natural, natural disasters. Um, we were also doing feature detection using computer vision and satellite imagery. So our social impact mission overall is to empower decision makers and policy makers in the Philippines um, to make more data-driven, more informed decisions. Um, we aim to do this by filling in critical data gaps, by um, providing reliable estimates. We're also um, huge advocates of open science, open data, and um, open source. So as much as possible, we want our work to be accessible to the general public. And we're always excited to be either developing or applying innovative solutions to um, long-standing societal problems in the Philippines. So in 2018, we were chosen as one of the AI cohorts under the UNICEF Innovation Fund. Um, so um, this was discussed by Vedran a while ago. But um, just to summarize, it provides us technological and financial support for companies that want to use technology like AI and machine learning to improve children's lives. So in our case, we decided to focus on um, poverty estimation. So I'll just walk you through a quick motivation as to why we chose this particular problem. So in the Philippines, around uh, 22 million or 21.6% of Filipino families live on under $6 a day. Um, and in terms of child poverty, three in every 10 children belong to poor families. Um, so despite the number of, um, despite the number of poverty alleviation, alleviation programs being um, formulated each year, the Philippines still, still lags behind its Southeast Asian uh, neighbors in terms of poverty eradication. And we believe that one of the major problems is the lack of um, reliable socioeconomic data. So um, as mentioned before, conducting household surveys is very challenging. It can cost millions of dollars. Uh, and because it's so labor intensive, it can be, it's conducted once every three to five years. And um, there's also the problem of, um, it's uh, reported on a regional or provincial level. So there's also the problem of granularity. So our solution is to use unconventional, readily available data, uh, data sources to predict socioeconomic indicators. So this includes using satellite images, uh, social media data with the help of QCRI, and other open geospatial data sets to predict and to model um, different dimensions of poverty. So this includes uh, access to education, access to electricity, and asset-based wealth. So uh, just to summarize, our goal is to provide a way to, um, to create faster, cheaper, uh, to provide a way for faster, cheaper, and more granular reconstruction of poverty measures in the Philippines. So what we decided to do was um, we replicated a study by Neil Jean from the Stanford Sustainability and AI Lab, where they estimated asset-based wealth for uh, five sub-Saharan African countries. So we just applied this to the Philippine context. Uh, we also use crowdsourced geospatial information for poverty prediction. So I'll walk you through the methods really quickly. Okay, so the main idea is that satellite images can be used to predict wealth. Um, so you can see that obviously the image to the right is uh, pretty wealthy because of the larger rooftops. Um, so the most straightforward approach to um, 
poverty prediction using satellite images would be to create a model that um, ingests satellite images and directly predicts poverty measures. Um, unfortunately, for this type of end-to-end -end, uh, machine learning approach to work, you would need lots of label training data. Um, and for the Philippines, the data set that we use is the DHS data set. And um, the unit of uh, geo the geographic unit is in terms of clusters. Um, so each cluster contains around um, up to 50 households. So um, in the DHS data set, there are only 1,000 um, clusters with corresponding wealth indices. And this is not enough to train a, um, a deep learning model. So um, how do we resolve this data gap? So um, what Neil Jean and his team suggested was, instead of directly predicting um, wealth indices, uh, why don't we try predicting nighttime lights f first as a proxy for economic development? So it's pretty clear that um, urban areas, uh, such as Metro Manila, tend to emanate brighter lights at night, compared to, say, a more rural area like Bohol, uh, which appears dimmer and is actually less wealthy. So looking at the data, um, you can see that uh, wealthier ar areas do tend to emanate brighter lights, whereas um, poor areas uh, emanate very little to no lights at all. So now um, it becomes a problem of, um, given a daytime satellite image, can you predict the corresponding nighttime light intensity? And the nighttime light intensity is uh, based on the pixel brightness value, zero being the darkest. Um, and 122 being the brightest. And furthermore, we bend this into three categories, low, medium, and high. So now it becomes this classic machine learning um, classification problem, where given a satellite image, um, classified as low, medium, or high nighttime light intensity. So uh, we also, because the Philippines is a um, archipelago, we did some additional pre-processing. So we, we removed pixels that were in um, bodies of water. Um, we also removed pixels that had no human settlement, and we relied on um, the human settlement, the, the high resolution um, settlement layer provided by Facebook research. So thanks, Andy, for that. Um, so um, we, so um, for this model, we used con um, a CNN to as a feature extractor. So, um, so that's the first steps. But what we're actually interested in is, is wealth prediction. So um, for each cluster, um, you can actually get the cluster centroid, which is just the average latitudes and longitudes of the household. Um, and then for, for, each for each cluster centroid, you can um, get a number of tiles surrounding it and pass that to the first model and extract features, uh, feature embeddings. And then for if each, uh, so for each image, you now have a corresponding feature embedding. You can just average the element-wise, and and thus you you get um, for each cluster, um, you, you you get uh, a corresponding cluster-level feature embeddings, and then you can use that to predict wealth. Um, another approach that we used was um, using crowdsourced geospatial data to predict wealth. So using open street map data. Um, well, just a little bit of background on OpenStreetMap data. It's a type of volunteer geographic uh, information platform where volunteers can upload their, um, where vo volunteers and on-the-ground surveyors can, up can upload uh, information on ge different geographic areas. So from this data, we engineered a number of features related to roads, um, buildings, and points of interest, and just fed that to the model. So, um, so how accurate were our predictions? Uh, we were able to explain around 62.4% of the variance. Um, this is using CNN features with regional indicators. Um, so just for context, in past literature, the, the, um, the R-squared range ranges from around uh, 0 0.51 to 0 0.75 for sub-Saharan African countries, Haiti and Nepal. So we're somewhere in between. Um, and then in reconstructing provincial level maps, uh, so we aggregated the, the cluster level um, predictions and we, we tried to reconstruct um, aggregate provincial level maps. And we can see that to some level of accuracy, we, um, it can be done. 
Um, but but this is still very coarse grain. So what we're actually more interested in is high resolution, more granular um, predictions. So what we did was we zoomed into one province, and um, uh, so for this example, we we chose Pampanga. So just a bit of background on Pampanga. Um, Pampanga is the eighth richest province in the Philippines. Um, only five percent of the families are predict are estimated to be poor. So. Um, Knowing those statistics alone doesn't really tell you um, where these uh, vulnerable communities are. So what we did was um, we, we took the province of Pambanga, we, we divided it into 18 square kilometer tiles, and then we did wealth predictions for each tile. And what we were able to, to find was uh, we identified this particular area, for example, in that red, um, the red area there. So that is actually the village of Sapang Uwak in Porak. And um, when we cross-checked it with other survey data, um, we found that it's actually poorer than 76% of the Philippines. And the poverty levels here are more similar to areas in southern Mindanao, which are, um, which are um, conflict-ridden. And then just a few kilometers away, we have um, this, uh, the blue area, which is the city, uh, Angeles City, which is among the country's 10%, which is among the country's 10% wealthiest areas. And it's more at par with areas like Metro Manila and uh, Pasay and Taguig. So it's interesting to see the um, different distribution of, of poverty here. So just some limitations of this method. Um, it's difficult to distinguish between different levels of extreme poverty for areas with little to no electrification. Um, it's also difficult to predict other aspects of human development. So we did try predicting um, access to water, at um, access to education, child mortality. Uh, we weren't able to predict it as well as we did for um, for wealth, and we believe that this might probably be because there's no clear relationship between these variables and um, and nighttime lights. And finally, we would like to emphasize that poverty estimates are not meant to replace on the ground surveys, but more more like to augment it. So uh, moving forward. Um, uh, we are looking to do more research collabor collaborations with our partners. So right now we're working with um, QCRI on using social media data to and, and other al alternative data sources to mo model poverty. We're also looking to um, explore other methodologies. Um, we're also looking to use. Uh, we're also looking to model other indicators such as social economic resilience to disasters, uh, child malnutrition rates. Unfortunately. Um, like in previous presentations, um, one of the biggest challenges is finding uh, reliable granular ground truth data. And finally, um, what we really want out of this project is real world impact. So um, so right now we're collaborating with public, the public sectors, so um, and, and, uh, non-government organizations, local government units. So this includes UNICEF Philippines, um, the National Anti-Poverty Commission, and um, the Alliance Foundation, which is a coalition of um, it's a coalition of um, local government units uh, on the possible applications for um, of this project for the Philippines. So uh, we'd like to thank UNICEF, QCRI, and um, our our contacts from the Stanford Sustainability and AI Lab for for making this work possible. And um, thank you so much for listening.